Hi everyone. This week's Parsha, Parshat Re'e, opens with the word Re'e, see or behold. You might be familiar with the idea that some people are visual learners and others are more auditory learners. So some learn best by seeing information and others learn best by hearing information repeated to them. I'm definitely a visual learner, so the first word, re'e, really speaks to me. Moshe tells the people, look, behold, I'm setting a blessing and a curse before you. There's an expression that seeing is believing, or a slightly different version is a picture is worth a thousand words. These are different ways of talking about the power of sight over and above our other senses in making something real to us. I think re'e is a rhetorical flourish in this week's Parsha, just a way of saying pay attention. But it's also something more. Just as people learn in different ways, we also use different metaphors for talking about what it means to notice or learn or take in information, sometimes depending on the person and sometimes depending on the situation. And it's worth paying attention to Moshe's choices throughout the Torah. There are other times when Moshe uses the metaphor of hearing. In fact, the very next sentence in the parsha, is the opening sentence. Behold, look, I'm setting before you a blessing and a curse. And then the very next words are, asher el mitzvot Adonai Elohechem, asher etchem hayom. The bracha is if you listen to the mitzvot, tishmu, you obey the mitzvot of God, and, and you and you follow them. Uh, the ones that I'm commanding you today, and it goes on from there. And you can think of other examples, of course. You can think about Shema, Shema Yisrael. We use that language of hearing. And there are many other times, of course, in the Torah when Moshe or God uses the language of listening. At the end of the Book of Zvarim, we'll return to that imagery in a very powerful way. The, the end of the Torah will read Parshat Ha'azinu, Ha'azinu Ha'shamayim Ba'azabera, listen. Listen, sky. Listen, earth. Um, we're going to we're going to call out uh, to the world to listen um, as we accept God's covenant again. So, do you see blessings and curses, or do you hear them? And is there a significance to hearing laws and hearing about God versus seeing blessings and curses? And what would the difference between those be? The commentators play with this imagery. I've put some commentaries on the sheet for you to take a look at. The Klia Kar says that it's a, it symbolizes a kind of stark choice. There's a visual image in your mind. The world is always hanging in balance between, um, between sinners and between uh, righteous people. And so one more deed in either direction will tip the balance of the world scales. And that's a, that scale image, I think, is one that resonates with us from High Holidays. Uh, maybe other times also, and so it's a powerful image you can hold in your mind that might influence your behavior. Sparno says, see, behold, means create a different kind of mental scheme for yourself in thinking about your actions. You can't imagine yourself to be like the rest of the nations. You, the Jewish people, don't have a choice to be just kind of benoni in the middle. Your choices are the extremes, either blessing or curse. The Midrash, Midrash Rabbah, Tzvarim Rabbah, commenting on this pasuk, this first pasuk, and, and as the Midrash often does, drawing in pasukim from other places in the Torah, um, evokes a different kind of image, builds a different kind of image. The Midrash says that the bracha ukala, the idea of a blessing and a curse, um, and something that you can see, the image is Sifra Vesaitha that um, these, two, these two things came down from heaven together, as it were, a book and a sword. It's a fun wordplay, Sifra Vesaitha. They came down together. That's what it means, see that I have given you a blessing and a curse. They came down intertwined from the heavens. And Chazal, you really see throughout Chazal that they play with this image this idea of either, as Svarno said, this extreme, either we embrace Torah or we have the option of going completely off the path, completely in a different direction. The Gemara in Avodah Zara talks about the, the trials, the, um, really the oppression of various sages by the Romans, 
And the Gemara in Avodah says that when they brought Elazar ben Prata for his trial before the Romans, they said, why did you teach? My tama tanit u my tama ganat. Why did you teach Torah and why did you steal? And he says to them, isaifa lo sifra vi isifra lo saifa. He says, no, you can't have both. Either I am, I'm an armed robber, I'm a sayaf, or I'm a scholar, but you can't be both. A person is either one or the other. So you see again this theme of extremes and this idea of this real um, mental image that is being generated by the word re'e. And I think that the idea that you have to have, that if you choose bracha, you're going to avoid kala. If you choose the blessings of the Torah, you're going to avoid this life of violence, is a really powerful one. So as you read the Parsha, and as we go through the rest of the book of Tzvarim, think about how and when seeing is used as a metaphor versus hearing. Which do you think has the most power in your own religious life, and which do you think is most emphasized in various parts of the Torah? No spoilers, but I think it's worth noting that Moshe, who's been hearing about the land of Israel for so long, is granted the opportunity to see it. And God emphasizes that it's a gift to Moshe to be able to see it, even though Moshe won't enter the land. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. I'm away visiting family this Shabbat, but I look forward to connecting when I return. Shabbat Shalom.